Hello, Synapse community. My name is Ryan Majidomer, and I'm a product manager on the Azure Synapse Analytics team. Today is what might be our last video in the security video series, and we are going to talk about networking security for your data. Some of the topics include firewalls, virtual networks, data exfiltration, and private endpoints. You'll recall from the last three videos, we talked about first steps to a infrastructure and foundational framework for your data. We talked about pipeline security with secrets and key vaults. And we talked about securing your workspace data. If you haven't watched those videos already, I highly recommend it. You can find links in the description, possibly with one of those eye bubble things in one of these corners. Now, let's dive into networking security. Starting with firewalls. A firewall is, quote, a security device that monitors and filters incoming and outgoing network traffic based on an organization's previously established security policies, end quote. And the main purpose of a firewall is to, quote, allow non-threatening traffic in and keeping dangerous traffic out, end quote. In Azure Synapse, a firewall will allow us to grant or deny access to our Synapse workspace based on IP addresses. This can be effectively used to block traffic to our workspace via the internet. Normally, firewalls would control both outbound and inbound traffic, but in this case, it's inbound only. When creating your workspace, we have the option to allow all IP addresses through. If we enable this option, we'll end up with the following rule added. If we don't enable this, we will not be able to connect to our workspace right away. It's best to keep it enabled, then go back and modify it. Let's move on to virtual networks. Remember that virtual networks will give us network isolation from other workspaces. This happens when we enable the Enable Managed Virtual Network option during the deployment of our workspace. The good thing to remember is that we can only enable this option during the creation of a workspace. One of the great things about this feature is it gives us all the benefits of having our workspace in a virtual network without the need to manage it. Now let's talk about data exfiltration. Another benefit of enabling a managed virtual network and private endpoints, which we'll cover in a second, is that we're now protected against data exfiltration. What is data exfiltration? It's when malware and or a malicious actor carries out an unauthorized data transfer from a computer. It's also commonly called data extrusion or data exportation. In Azure Synapse, Protection against data exfiltration guards against malicious insiders accessing our Azure resources and exfiltrating sensitive data to locations outside of our organization's scope. In addition to enabling the Manage Virtual Network option, we can also specify which Azure Active Directory tenant our workspace can communicate with. Finally, let's move on to private endpoints. A private endpoint is a, quote, a network interface that connects us privately and securely to a service powered by Azure Private Link. Private Endpoint uses a private IP address from our VNet, effectively bringing the service into our VNet, end quote. In short, we can access a public service using a private endpoint. Every Synapse workspace comes with a few endpoints, which are used to connect to from various applications. This table is a great one to understand those connections. If we take the dedicated SQL endpoint, for example, and we add a private endpoint, what's basically happening is when we connect to it, our request goes through a redirection to a private IP. If we do an NS lookup to the SQL endpoint, we can see it routes to the private endpoint. Let's talk about managed private endpoints. Synapse uses a managed VNet slash subnet, not a customer's one, and exposes private endpoints to a customer's VNets as needed. This is the reason we never pick a VNet in the wizard during the creation. Since the VNet belongs to Microsoft and is managed, it's isolated by itself. It therefore requires private endpoints from another platform as a service to be created into it. It operates the same way as the managed VNet feature of Azure Data Factory. Let's check this in the following diagram. To see what endpoints we've created by default, Let's navigate to the new Synapse workspace in Synapse Studio. Under the Manage Hub, find the Security section and Manage Private Endpoint. 
we can see that two private endpoints were created by default. When we deploy a Synapse workspace in a managed virtual network, we need to tell Synapse how to communicate with other Azure platforms as services. These endpoints are required by Synapse orchestration to communicate with the two SQL pools, dedicated and serverless. Now that we've covered managed private endpoints, let's talk about private endpoint connections. The main question is, why do we have a private endpoint connection in the Azure portal for our Synapse workspace? Where managed private endpoints allow the workspace to connect to other platform as a service services outside of its managed virtual network, private endpoint connections allow for everyone and everything to connect to the Synapse endpoints using a private endpoint. We will need to create a private endpoint for the following. Dedicated SQL pool endpoint. We should select the SQL sub-resource during creation. Serverless SQL endpoint. We should select the SQL on-demand sub-resource during creation. And development endpoint. We should select the dev sub-resource during creation. And finally, let's review the private link hub. You'll notice here is a list of private endpoints. We only have three of them, while our workspace has four endpoints. That's because the Studio Workspace web URL will need a private link hub to set up the secured connection. And that wraps up our video for today. Tell us in the comments, would you like to know more about security? Are there specific areas you'd like to know? Is there something you think we may have left out? Let us know. We may indeed continue this series. Again, my name is Ryan Majidimer. You can find me on Twitter. You can find Synapse on Twitter, Azure underscore Synapse. You, yourself, right now, can become an Azure Synapse influencer. It's very cool. You can gain one of three titles. I'm sure they're very exciting titles. Contender, Challenger, Champion. It's very fun. You can find information in the description of this video. Like, comment, subscribe. Thanks for watching, and we'll catch you on the next one. Thank you.